the rabbis of the Talmud were great storytellers. They often told tall tales to their students in order to teach a lesson. They talked about things that perhaps they didn't experience, but they made the story to make the point. So here's one of those stories about a, a journey at sea. Rob Judah enjoyed telling his students about the sea journey from India, his homeland, to Israel. After several days at sea, Rob said, I saw a large shining object on the ocean floor. Immediately, the crew and I declared it to be a precious gem. Although a sea serpent lurked nearby, a diver attempted to retrieve the jewel. Suddenly, the monster charged the ship. Its mouth gaped wide. And without a doubt, the monster was about to swallow the ship. However, thanks to our good fortune, a huge black condor swooped down from the sky and bit off the sea serpent's head. The water around us turned red with blood. Out of nowhere, another sea serpent appeared. It carried the severed head to its mate and reattached it, restoring the monster's life in its fury. Now it was even more intent on devouring the ship. Again, our lives were gravely endangered. But then the condor flew down and bit off the monster's head. By this time, the diver had thrown the jewel onto the ship's deck. It just so happened the ship contained a large store of salted birds. Incredibly, as the jewel rolled near, each bird came to life. Finally, all of the salted birds flew away, taking the jewel with them. It was a miracle that we all survived, said Rad Judah. This is an interesting story and certainly a tall tale. And the question is, what does the story say to you? What is, it mean, what is its meaning? What do the various parts of the story represent? This was a methodology that the rabbis used long, long ago in Talmudic times, more than 2,000 years ago, to teach a lesson. To me, when I read this story, the three things that seems symbolic on the, in the story are the sea monster, the sea serpent, number one, the condors, number two, and the jewel. I think the story is telling us about good and evil. I think that the sea monsters represent the evil that we face in our lives, that sometimes the evil that attacks us, even though we may bite its head off, Figuratively, the evil keeps coming back and back and back. I think the condor represents the goodness. The condors are the saviors of the story, and they represent the good that is in the world that we see each and every day. And the jewel? Well, I think the jewel represents the secret of our ability to deal with good and evil. If we only could have that jewel in our possession, we would have the answer to about how to deal with good and evil. The jewel represents the ability for us to deal with it. And so this story leaves us with a thought about good and evil in our lives and how we deal with it. How do we respond to it? Jewish tradition teaches that each of us is born as a blank slate when we are born into this world. And each of us is implanted with what's called a Yetzer Hara and a Yetzer HaTov a good inclination, and an evil inclination. We're born as a tabula rasa, the rabbis say, literally a blank slate. And it's up to us about what we write upon that slate. Do we write for good? Do we write for bad? Do we make up for the things that we do? It's a challenge, and so Judaism gives us the ability to make those choices in our lives for ourselves to be good or to be evil. And also it gives us the ability to find that jewel, perhaps, a little bit of the secrets about how do we cope with that which is thrown upon us. Tradition teaches that we don't always have the ability to have the ability to decide what is thrown upon us, the good and the evil, but we do have the ability of how we deal with it. Do we take the evil and wrestle and grapple with it like the, like the uh, semen in the story? Or do we just allow it to happen? With the good, do we celebrate the good? Do we take it for granted or do we celebrate it and recognize it for what it is? It's a wonderful story. 
So I hope that you and your family perhaps will have a little chance to discuss what the story means to you, what your interpretation is. And I hope that out of the story, it creates some discussion and some debate amongst you and your family. Once again, I thank you for sharing this moment of a Talmudic story with me, and I wish everyone well.